Time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. We'll begin with the next big weather maker. Doesn't arrive until the next 24 to 48 hours. So we have a full day of sunshine today and near record heat, unseasonably warm for this time of year. By tomorrow, you'll start to notice a little bit more cloud cover and a little bit more winds. Adam? As you get ready to head out the door, we're following the day's top local stories. Let's start with Catherine Mazzone. Adam, prosecutors are likely combing through new evidence today in the case of an accused cop killer. Devon Lyman is charged in the murder of APD officer Daniel Webster. He recently faced federal charges for being a felon in possession. Lyman could see 10 years in prison for that. Now that it's over and Lyman is charged for murder, previously sealed video is now public. It includes the lapel cam video of Webster's last moments alive, as well as Walgreens surveillance video and a conversation between Lyman and police in which Lyman apologizes about Webster. Crystal? On to news happening right now, President Barack Obama's in Greece, a first stop of his final overseas trip as Commander in Chief. Air Force One touched down just a few hours ago. At the top of the agenda, reassuring European allies that President elect Donald Trump is committed to NATO and the Transatlantic Alliance. The President will also travel to Germany and Peru during the six day tour. New this morning, 27-year-old Brendan Dassey could soon be walking out of a federal prison. Dassey was sentenced to life in prison for the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach, a case made famous by the Netflix series Making a Murderer. Dassey was 16 when he confessed to helping his uncle Stephen Avery rape and murder the 25-year-old. In August, a judge ruled police unfairly questioned and coerced Dassey to confess. This morning, defense attorneys for the former Santa Fe County Sheriff's deputy charged with murder will have more time to pull their case together. This after Ty Chan's retrial is now delayed to May 8th. Investigators say Chan shot and killed fellow deputy Jeremy Martin in October of 2014. It happened in Las Cruces. Chan claims it was self-defense. Chan's first trial ended with a hung jury. Tributes are pouring in this morning for veteran journalist Gwen Eiffel, who died after battling cancer. Eiffel co-hosted PBS NewsHour since 2013 with Judy Woodruff. They were the first women to co-anchor a nightly news broadcast. Eiffel also moderated the vice presidential debates in 2004 and 2008, along with one of the Democratic primary debates this year. She was 61 years old. State Senator Michael Sanchez may soon be taking on the group behind attack ads against him to court. The ads were the work of the Republican Political Committee, Advanced New Mexico Now. Sanchez claims the ads were false allegations. He traveled to Hawaii on taxpayers' money and that he was, quote, dismissive to the widow of a Rio Rancho fallen police officer. Sanchez says he hopes the lawsuit will stop liars from influencing elections. Sarah? In just hours, a UNM fraternity house will be demolished. This was once the home of the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity, and it's been abandoned for close to 10 years. The fraternity lost its right to be on campus back in 2005 after rape allegations. It's also been the victim of several fires over the years. The owner and code enforcement division will handle the demolition process. Adam. This morning, crews are battling 15 major wildfires raging across western North Carolina. Already thousands of acres are charred. Firefighters are now working around the clock on the front lines of the Party Rock fire. It's only 15% contained this morning. The governor confirms more than 1,700 structures have been threatened, and fire crews are using streams and roadways to try to contain those flames. Today's Metro Threat Index at a zero. We've got nothing to worry about. Really, today looks a little bit more like a September day with those temperatures out there. But we're talking sunshine and light winds, high temps in the low 70s here in the Metro. But do expect this Metro Threat Index to climb as we get into the next couple of days. Crystal? Thanks, Kristen. This morning, some students now have a new home energy saving kit, all thanks to PNM. It's part of the power company's plan to help kids get an early start on energy saving habits. Yesterday, the kits were handed out at elementary schools around the state. The students' new kits include high-efficiency light bulbs and a low-flow shower head. Teens could soon have more access to gyms at community centers across Albuquerque. That's if a city councilor gets his way. Brad Winter is sponsoring a bill aimed at 16 and 17 year olds, and right now their access is only available to those 18 and older. Winter cites the CDC saying only 29% of high school students do have an hour of physical activity per day. Under this proposal, teens would have to be supervised by a parent or a guardian. A Frida Kahlo painting never before shown in public will soon be up for sale. For years, the whereabouts of the picture had been a mystery. After her death, the painting was given to an aide.
who helped Kahlo in the studio. The artwork is valued between one and a half million to two million dollars. The piece of art is scheduled to be auctioned next week at Sotheby's Auction House that's in New York City. One accident to talk about when it comes to the morning drive. This might slow you down. An accident on the I-40 eastbound at the Carlisle Boulevard off-ramp. No word that that's actually causing any tie-ups at this point, but if it does, that's something you might want to avoid. Uh, the rest of the metro looks really good this morning. Okay, here's something interesting and possibly disturbing. You can tell a lot about a person from the chemicals found on their cell phones. Researchers in California discovered they could piece together clues about diet, hygiene, medications, even caffeine and sunscreen use via molecules swabbed and analyzed from a person's phone. Weird. That is weird. A little disturbing. Yeah, ultra <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> Ely. Okay. Okay, out to the school story. Yeah, Michigan cashier rising, rising quickly. Listen to him there. He sounds really good thanks to a viral video of him singing to Maxwell's hit song, Ascension. Video even got the artist's attention, and now Maxwell has requested his talents, his cashier's talents, for an upcoming show in Detroit. He's so good. The pruning cashier. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, time now for the five facts. And we start with number five. An Albuquerque woman is celebrating a big win on the game show Wheel of Fortune. Michelle Marquez appeared on last night's episode. She watched with family and friends who didn't know the outcome yet. She was sworn to secrecy. Michelle walked away with $11,000 and a trip to Florida. Good price. Mm -hmm. Number four, a New Mexico senator is hoping to gain some support for a push to get rid of the Electoral College. Senator Mimi Stewart says it's time for change. After Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but President-elect Donald Trump won the Electoral College. Stewart is backing an interstate deal to switch to the popular vote. Some lawmakers, though, say candidates would just stick to the nation's largest cities if the popular vote decided the presidency. Definitely weather to get outdoors to today. We're talking high temps in the 70s, near record temps for a large chunk of New Mexico with nothing but sunshine on top. Number two, a New Mexico lawmaker preparing to reintroduce a bill that gives reckless drivers who kill people harsher punishments. The driver accused in a drag racing crash in Albuquerque that killed a 10 year old girl over the weekend only faces six years behind bars if convicted. State Rep Sarah Maestas Barnes says she wanted a law that ups the sentence for drunk drivers to also cover reckless driving. She says the Senate decided to only focus on DWI. And number one this morning, the special prosecutor handling the murder case against former Albuquerque officers Keith Sandy and Dominique Perez says there's new evidence. Randy McGinn tells News 13 that involves Sandy's police body camera. Both Sandy and Perez are still facing second degree murder charges in the death of James Boyd. This comes after Sandy's attorney says McGinn offered Sandy a plea deal, which he rejected. A judge has set a potential new trial date of next July in case incoming DA Raul Torres decides to retry those officers. We have a lot more coming up on Fox New Mexico. We'll see you on the other side in just a few minutes.